Was Paulette Goddard driven only by money and power? Sometimes you only see certain women with rich and powerful people. Well, Paulette Goddard was exactly such a woman. I get it. It's common for people to jump to conclusions about women like Paulette. But let's not fall into that trap. To truly grasp her story, we need to dig deeper into why she made the choices she did. In this video, I'll share the juicy details of Paulette Goddard's secrets. I'll shed light on why she had a penchant for powerful men. There's always a backstory behind every decision, and Paulette's life is no exception. So join me as we unravel the reasons behind Paulette Goddard's relationships with men. As your bonus, I'll give you exclusive insights into how she expertly manipulated the most influential men in Hollywood. She was a predator. I'm saving the juiciest part for last, a rumour that was never officially confirmed, but still circulated. Get ready, because I'm about to spill a secret you won't hear anywhere else. You can also explore her revelation about her real father, and how her mother pushed her into shady situations with men from a young age. Throughout the 1940s, she reigned as Paramount's top contract actress, but her fame didn't stop at the movie theatre. The real drama was in Paulette's actual life. She had this knack for wrapping men around her little finger, and I'm not talking about just any men. Paulette Goddard was no ordinary Hollywood star. She was sharp, sexy, shrewd, and a bit of a fox. When it comes to her taste in men, they had to come with a hefty six-figure bank account and a solid network of connections to ensure her Hollywood future. But what turned Paulette into such a woman? Have you ever considered that? What I can guarantee is that your opinion will completely change about her after watching this video. Nothing is what it seems in Hollywood. Paulette Goddard was a real rule-breaker. In the midst of all those platinum blondes in Hollywood, she, a fiery and ambitious brunette, carved her own path. Her fierce independence and a string of confirmed and rumoured romances with wealthy, influential men were the stuff of legend. But no matter how skilled she was at turning tough situations in her favour, fate had an unkind plan lurking just around the corner. Let's go back to the beginning. Paulette Goddard was born in 1910, but her real name was Marion. It's a bit unclear why, but her mum started calling her Pauline. Her parents eventually split up and got divorced, but I'm not exactly sure why. There are different versions of the story. Later in life, Paulette claimed her dad left the family, but there's a darker possibility. Her mum kidnapped her. To avoid a custody battle, Paulette and her mum were always on the move. Growing up like that had a big impact on Paulette. Decades later, still carrying the scars of her rough childhood, she shocked everyone by saying her father wasn't her real dad. He didn't take it well. He got so mad that he sued her saying she hurt his reputation and cost him his job. Can you believe suing your own daughter and asking her for money? He wanted money from his estranged daughter, and he won. Paulette had to pay him $35 a week. Maybe her early daddy issues had something to do with her taste in men, but Paulette's habit of getting into trouble started when she was young. She quickly became adept at manipulating men almost as if it was second nature, you see, she had to develop these seductive skills early on due to the challenging circumstances she faced. Growing up, Paulette and her mother had to get resourceful to make ends meet. They came up with a rather dubious scheme to support themselves. They would travel on steamships, where they targeted and swindled affluent men out of their money. Apart from the hustles, she began her career as a model and a Ziegfeld Follies girl. Her charm was something else. At just seventeen, she had already enchanted a wealthy New York businessman, Edgar James. Despite their significant age gap, they decided to tie the knot. But their marriage was anything but perfect. Paulette's swift leap into matrimony at such a young age turned out to be a recipe for disaster. Just two years after saying I do, her romantic life was in a complete shambles. But it wasn't all bad. When she divorced James, she walked away with a whopping $375,000. Before she even hit her twenties, she had already received a hefty sum of money from a wealthy older man for practically nothing. Quite the ideal for a young girl at the time. 
From that moment on, Paulette knew she had the knack for winning men over, which also meant she had the knack for getting what she wanted from their wallets. She was on fire. She hit the brakes on her ill-fated marriage and dove headfirst into her career. In 1930, something big happened to her. Samuel Goldwyn spotted her, and probably using her charm once again, she wove her spell and became one of the Goldwyn girls. Now she was a budding actress, mingling with the likes of Lucille Ball, Betty Grable and Anne Southern. But Paulette was different. She wasn't one to settle. Unafraid to use her skills and always on the lookout for the next promising opportunity, she'd switch gears for a brighter future and more money in her pocket. She craved more. Ever wondered if she was truly money-hungry or just incredibly savvy? When you think about the challenges women her age faced, you might see her as a sharp businesswoman who knew her life's direction from a young age. It's all about perspective. I can't wait to hear your take. So share your thoughts in the comments now as we dive into the juicier parts. Shortly after Paulette abandoned Goldwyn and joined Hal Roach Studios, her life took an exciting turn when she crossed paths with Charlie Chaplin, known as the Tramp. They met on Joe Shank's yacht, who was the president and chairman of United Artists, a studio co-founded by Chaplin. Paulette happened to be in the right place at the right time once again, but as we know, luck alone doesn't cut it. This was the moment to unleash her secret weapon and turn up the charm, the kind that could mesmerise any man, because their initial encounter wasn't all lovey-dovey. She was wrapped up in a crucial business deal. She had a chance to invest $50,000 from her divorce settlement into a dodgy film company. So when she met Hollywood heavyweight Chaplin, she figured she'd seek his take on the deal. Chaplin didn't hold back. He advised her to ditch that sketchy proposition. But he had more than business on his mind. Even though Paulette had asked Chaplin solely for business advice, he decided to share some personal advice too. Just before meeting him, Paulette dyed her natural brunette hair platinum blonde. She wanted to join the ranks of Hollywood's blonde bombshells. During that time, blondes ruled the roost. Every woman yearned to capture the allure of those blonde-haired actresses. Paulette thought that by becoming one of them, she'd secure her own path to success. It might appear she was a tad naive at the time. But Chaplin wasn't thrilled with her golden locks. Perhaps he felt something between them and wanted her to be a perfect match, but not for the public, for himself. He suggested she return to her natural hair colour, and Paulette went along with it. Whether it was her intention or just her charm, Paulette captivated Chaplin. He was eager to work with her immediately. There was a hitch, though. Paulette's contract with Hal Roach. Chaplin dealt with it decisively, buying out her contract and offering her a deal she couldn't refuse. And, I can't quite figure out how, Paulette ended up being offered even more money by yet another man. It's honestly puzzling whether this was due to the allure of her charm or the intensity of Chaplin's desires. Paulette once again showed how she could effortlessly control the most influential men in Hollywood, one after another. As their professional relationship grew, Chaplin became more than a mentor to Paulette. Their connection was bound to deepen. For Paulette, her contract with Chaplin meant more than a career boost. It provided a chance to refine her social skills. Under Chaplin's guidance, she mastered her art of sophisticated flirting. She once said, He trained me to speak for three minutes on any subject, but not four. Chaplin's training was a bit too effective, because when their romantic chemistry ignited, their love story became an unstoppable force. Soon, Chaplin wasn't just Paulette's mentor, he was her lover. Their high-profile relationship attracted intense media attention. Paulette's name was all over the headlines, her star rising thanks to her connection with the great Charlie Chaplin. Yet, not everyone was thrilled about their love. Within Chaplin's inner circle, Paulette's arrival wasn't welcomed. To Rachie Kono, Chaplin's chauffeur and private secretary felt threatened by Paulette's new status as Chaplin's girlfriend. He left. Chaplin gave him and his wife $1,000 each and secured a job for him at United Artists Japan. With the scrutiny gone, the happy couple took their relationship to the next level. Paulette and Chaplin's love soared to extraordinary heights. 
they became inseparable, relishing every moment together. They shared adventures, including sailing on Chaplin's yacht to Catalina on weekends. Then in 1936 they reportedly eloped in Canton, China. But their marriage sparked a bewildering controversy. Paulette became Chaplin's third wife, but she was unlike her predecessors. It's hard not to admire this free spirit of Hollywood, a town she may not have conquered, but one she used as her playground. Listing all the women Charlie Chaplin had affairs with would take forever, most of them being young, naive teenagers who were shocked that a movie star was interested in them. Paulette began in a similar way, but after nearly a decade-long relationship, she turned out to be far from ordinary. What made Paulette stand out? Why was her connection with Chaplin so different from his other flings? Heck, we're not even sure if they were married or not. There was something quite perplexing about Paulette and Chaplin's marital status. What? Well, nobody could confirm if they were legally wed. The sole instance of them referring to marriage was when Chaplin called Paulette his wife at a movie premiere. Yet years later, the startling truth emerged. Chaplin confided in family members that their marriage wasn't legally binding. Even though their union lacked official status, the couple radiated happiness. The bond between us was loneliness, Paulette said. But love and that loneliness alone couldn't quell the relentless rumours that kept circulating. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I've been saving the spiciest part for the grand finale. Rumour has it that Paulette Goddard wasn't exactly faithful during her time with Chaplin, and she was into women too. There was plenty of gossip swirling around about a romance with another man, none other than the renowned composer George Gershwin. Again, not some obscure nobody or a budding actor who's just kicked off his career, am I right? What a coincidence! Some even believe she served as the muse for his famous song, They Can't Take That Away From Me. But this is just a taste of the drama yet to unfold. It seems Paulette had a thing for artistic men. She was captivated by Diego Rivera, who was married to Frida Kahlo. Their relationship began when Rivera painted her portrait, an idea that was suggested by George Gershwin, who was also a friend of Rivera's. Then the rumours took an even more complex turn. They said there was an unconventional love triangle involving Paulette, Diego and Frida. People were crazy about what's between them. It's unclear whether Diego was aware of these rumours about his supposed lover and his wife. Regardless of the truth, Paulette became more significant in Rivera's life. After Chaplin's modern times, she received critical acclaim, finally achieving major success. It seemed like she had finally attained what she always desired, success, fame and the money that came with it. To her delight, this breakthrough only led to more. As always, Paulette wanted more, and it seems like she got it. In 1940, she starred in the film The Great Dictator, co-starring with Chaplin once again. The film was a critical and commercial hit, becoming a classic that continues to inspire satirical comedies. But despite the movie's success, it marked the end of Paulette and Chaplin. All good things come to an end, especially in Hollywood, and that's what happened to Paulette and Chaplin. Shortly after the release, they announced their separation, but they maintained a close friendship. And just as before, Paulette wasn't about to leave empty-handed. She received a divorce settlement that included a deal to star in a movie directed by Chaplin, but it never materialised. While her love life faced challenges, Paulette's career flourished throughout the 1940s. After several years of moderate success, she reached a career high in 1943, when she starred in So Proudly We Hail. She received a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, setting her up for future success. It seemed like Paulette had struck gold, and all the relentless effort she pulled into her career was finally paying off. In 1944, instead of changing studios as she had in the past, Paulette signed another contract with Paramount. Under this new deal, she acted in Kitty, which became her biggest movie with Paramount. While relishing her success, she also found fresh happiness in her personal life. Now, you might wonder if there was another wealthy man in the picture. You would be right to ask. Husband number three was fellow actor Burgess Meredith. 
After marrying in 1944, Paulette's life moved at breakneck speed, but her marriage to Meredith wasn't without its challenges. Paulette suffered a tragedy. She miscarried a son. It was her only reported pregnancy. She didn't have any children during her lifetime, although it's unknown whether it was by choice. But they were going to encounter an even bigger problem in the later years of their marriage. During the 1940s, fear of communism swept through the US, and Hollywood wasn't exempt. Meredith found himself on the Hollywood blacklist, as his wife Paulette wasn't immune from the stigma, but as you already know, Paulette wasn't one to let her lifetime of work, her reputation, be ruined by this. So, just as before, she found another powerful man, and this time she hit the jackpot. Her next prey was Howard Hughes. Paulette had set her sights on making him hers, and stated, Hughes is the only man in America rich enough for me. Unfortunately for her, Hughes caught wind of her intentions early on, and swiftly made his escape. In the early 1940s, Paulette's career was soaring, but things took a nosedive in the latter half of the decade. It all started in 1947 with two major box office flops. Unfortunately, her career decline was unstoppable. Box office failures kept piling up, and Paulette lost her status as a box office draw and acclaimed actress. Paramount took notice, and in 1949 they bid farewell to Goddard. But this downturn had an unexpected silver lining. It allowed her to explore new horizons. With no studio obligations, Paulette had the freedom to pursue her own projects. In the early 50s, she produced a movie and took on a few more acting roles. She even ventured into television and stage productions, but these didn't garner much success. While many former stars struggle after their acting careers end, Paulette was different. She had a plan B up her sleeve, and she was one smart cookie. Despite her acting career's demise, Paulette was financially secure. Her side hustle, investments, had been a consistent source of passive income. What's more, she had built a retirement nest egg. By the late 50s, Paulette retired from showbiz. After a tumultuous decade, both personally and professionally, things were finally looking up. After three failed marriages, Paulette found her prince charming at last. Husband number four was German writer Eric Maria Remarque, and this marriage bucked the trend, as it didn't end in divorce. Paulette had a penchant for older wealthy men, and Remarque was no exception. With renewed zest for life, and money in her pocket, Paulette settled in Switzerland. But don't worry, her scandalous story continues. Their marriage raised eyebrows. They had a unique living arrangement. Couples spent quality time together, but that wasn't the case for Paulette and Remark. They had a unique way of living. They maintained separate apartments within the same building. They did meet for dinner every night. Of course, the marriage began to reveal its true colours, and they weren't all that pleasant. Paulette's commitment to the marriage had its limits. When Remark suffered a stroke, leaving him physically weak, she didn't care about him. She left him alone. You can imagine what Paulette's biggest wish was this time, and when it finally happened, it meant even more money for our Goddard. She inherited most of Remark's estate, which included homes and an incredible collection of contemporary art. In the circles of old Hollywood, it became evident that Paulette had a knack for making money, and this is when we see Paulette's star power shining again. She reinvented herself. She became a glamorous socialite. Dazzling in gorgeous jewellery, she became regular at New York's fancy cultural events. Her bustling social life let her rub shoulders with big shots and make friends with famous folk. But you know what? Life doesn't always play by your rules. Even with all her fame, fortune and victories, there was one thing Paulette had no say over. Her health. In her later years, she faced a health crisis. In 1975, she underwent a mastectomy to treat breast cancer. While the procedure was successful, its aftermath was bittersweet. Paulette regained her life, but it came at the cost of her self-confidence. The treatment changed her body, which affected the former beauty. Her reaction marked the beginning of a slow, melancholic decline towards a sombre end. Her life didn't end dramatically, but rather in sadness, despite her wealth. Age and illness had stolen her beauty, affecting her emotionally. 
In her last 15 years, she turned to alcohol and withdrew from the world. On April 23, 1990, she passed away from heart failure. It was a quiet, subdued ending for a vibrant woman who had once lived life to the fullest. Her Hollywood journey is a roller coaster of ambition and cunning. It raises questions about the pursuit of fame and fortune. On one hand, she is portrayed as a woman who stopped at nothing manipulating wealthy men for her own gain. But there's another side to this story, that of a savvy, business-minded woman in control of her destiny. In an industry where countless starlets fell victim to the whims of studios, Paulette stands out as a trailblazer, a woman who refused to be a pawn. Her tale challenges us to look beyond the surface and acknowledge the complexity of human nature. Let's not rush to judgment. Instead, let's appreciate the multidimensional character that Paulette was. In the glamorous world of Hollywood, Paulette Goddard wasn't just a silver screen sensation. Her story goes beyond the movies. It's a testament to resilience, ambition, and a sprinkle of feminine allure. Hers is a name that lives on, reminding us that sometimes the most captivating stories unfold behind the scenes. Unlock the best-kept secrets of Hollywood. Don't miss out. Start with, did Doris Day's bedroom have more visitors than her fans ever imagined? Click now.